Good morning and welcome to the fourth International Power and Conditioning Symposium. Thank you very much for giving up a significant amount of time to come and listen to fellow guest speakers and listen to us talk about our view on where we are with Industry 4 and hyperscale data centers. I'd like to get started uh, with a little presentation from myself, which is really just to set the scene, the way in which we think uh, hyperscale data centers and computing uh, is heading. So we're doing more virtualization. We're trying to do more with less, less power, less IT requirements, less cooling requirements. Uh, we're doing more with less. Uh, companies are increasingly realizing that they can't manage data centers themselves. Hyperscale, edge and traditional data centers are going to continue to grow. And so that means for us, for people like us, for industry manufacturers, we need to be far more innovative and far more versatile. Go ahead and launch into a little bit, talk a little bit about challenges of uh, hyperscale data center construction. So um, some of the other future impact that you'll see is that with the raising of the temperature in the cold aisle, the ability to keep air moving across that server is essential. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity here. So I'm presenting the case study of Ames. This is a one megawatt scalable IP bus solution. Again, welcome to our test department here. Uh, we will present you some practical tests with the battery-free UPS systems and some diesel gen sets outside. So when we do the mains failure, you will see CPMs discharging, then the diesels will start and they will take the load. Look for the uh, orange light here. Now the start signal has been sent. Starting time for the gen sets 14 seconds and at this value we have 95.5 percent efficiency with the power bridges charged and running and ticker charged so fully operational system today i'd like to present to you our xt uh, multi-module system the scalable system in 250 kilowatt building blocks up to one megawatt on a single centralized bypass and between two centralized bypass you can have up to two megawatts of capacity and now I'd like to invite you for a live demonstration of the XTMMS product. Now we'll do a quick mains failure, show the system carry the load while there's no mains input. And now we'll start charging back up to full capacity. It'll take uh, just over a minute. I'd like to invite you all to step this way where I'll hand it back over to Frank to see the PB60 demonstration. It operates at, uh, at 600 volts, 60 hertz. And I think we can now do the test. As this power bridge has 60 megajoules, that's, that's a neat number because we can show you now a, a discharge of one megawatt for one minute. You can see the power bridge charge level there going down. Okay, <laughs> caught it right on the point. <laughs> so one megawatt for 60 seconds. Good morning, everybody. Right. Hope you had a good, enjoyable dinner last night. And uh, today we will have a few sessions in the morning and two sessions and followed by a panel uh, later this afternoon. It's uh, great to be here actually today. So look, my ambition for today is uh, fairly simple and that is to share with you um, some learnings I've developed around um, hyperscale and also learnings around cooling trends. So, why tier four? Why do we do what we do? We're building the infrastructure for our children and our children's children. It is truly transforming our society. So we looked at the site and we gone, well, why don't we just run the pipes on the outside of the building? Oh my goodness, I can fit more racks in, which is millions of dollars of more revenue. It's tier four compliant, and by default, we've sidestepped some of these rules and containment by putting stuff outside. The dollars per megawatt for this dropped dramatically over our old water-cooled chilled systems as well. Smart energy because without smart energy, controlled energy, 
you cannot really be a 4.0 industry. We have learned that the interest in switching over from diesel power generating sets into gas power generating sets is, is becoming more and more, uh, let me say, common. We have seven power stations in our facility for power and we have around about, I think, five cooling stations implemented for shilled water. They don't want to build a data center that looks very similar to their competitors, their neighbors. So we propose a solution with equipment suppliers and subcontractors. We're going to bring them on board early on during design to help uh, work on a project. This hadn't been done before, but uh, we worked with, with Pillar and uh, they were brave enough to take this on. This is our panel discussion, uh, headed and chaired by Scott Davis. So as you can see, we have quite an um, elaborate cross-section of expertise, so we should have a, quite a lively discussion. I think uh, looking at Asia, one of the things that's happening is, uh, particularly in Singapore, it wants to be the smart city of the future. What we're trying to do, as I said, is maintain spatials and flexibility in the design, so we don't overcommit. Yeah, it, it gets challenging to design trying to predict the future. All right, with that, uh, I think it's time to open it up to the audience if they have any questions for the panelists. Well, I like, I like what you suggest about the uh, noise regulation. All the noises at a data center are very repetitive and, and could be canceled with a counter noise if you think about it. It's a great question, Rob. An awesome question. So, I do think um, one of the comments uh, that was made yesterday and I think it's a reality, the next two years we'll see it, is um, a mix of what we'll call core data centres, which are the ones we know today, and um, edge data centres. So, after that, one more time, please, everybody, our guest speakers, thank you. Uh, it's now the end of the conference. Once again, thank you very much to these people.